Okay, good morning. Um, as I'm sitting here watching the, the keynotes before me, my mind is just racing with what Jeff and what Greg have, have highlighted. It, it gets me thinking about this journey that, that my organization, I'm sure many of your organizations have to take to start preparing ourselves so that we can meet these vendors, these service providers as quickly as possible down their path with our issues and get some of this stuff implemented. I'm very much in favor of what they're, what they're working on. So, uh, again, my name is John Tisch. I'm responsible for ITOT integration at Cliffs Natural Resources. Uh, Cliffs Natural Resources is actually a 167-year-old company. Uh, we work primarily in the space of iron mining. Uh, we have about a dozen coal mines as well, uh, metallurgical coal mines located here in the United States. Uh, our, predominantly, we're here in North America, but we do have some operations uh, in Western Australia as well. As mining um, companies go, we're probably a middle of the road, middle of the pack kind of a company. We are not one of the large mining um, companies that you see in Western Australia. We're rather in the middle of that pack. Myself personally, I'm a couple of months short of my 29th uh, anniversary with the company. Uh, all the while I've been in IT, I've relocated several times between our operations at our mine sites and our corporate office. And throughout my uh, tenure with the company, I've always focused, or I've always enjoyed, working more on the operations facing type of projects. I'm not your HR, I'm not your accounting systems kind of IT guy. That stuff does not interest me that much. I'd rather, if given the choice, I'd rather focus on things that are really business facing where the money is made. With that in mind, uh, I guess that earned me the uh, opportunity to be involved in, in these types of projects. I'm fortunate enough to have a CIO that I think recognizes where the future lies in our business, and it really comes down to the things that Jeff and Greg have spoke to and doing more with the, with the technology to drive value out of our business. So, uh, just a statement about mining, and for those that represent mining companies, I know we have a variety of industries represented here. Uh, this may apply to other industries as well, but certainly in mining, mining is not on the forefront, if you will, of implementation of the types of technologies that have been discussed to this point. Uh, it is a very conservative type of an industry, and people tend to pull back, especially in this down cycle. It's a very cyclical industry. In this down cycle, people tend to pull back and go to the, the bread and butter, what they feel comfortable with but we have to do something to get, as an industry, move ourselves forward. If you look at where other industries have gone in the last 100 years, there's been tremendous advancements. As an example, we see the phone, and now we're all carrying smartphones on our hip, and we're all very well aware of what they're capable of doing. In mining, on the other hand, um, 100 years ago, we had shovels, okay? A hundred years later, we have bigger shovels, okay? The reality of it is, yes, they're bigger. There's tons of operations technology now deployed in our operations. The reality of it is, I don't think we're using that technology to its full capabilities. In the case of these shovels, they are incredibly intelligent machines, okay? They are spewing data off of them at incredible rates, so much so that, I, you know, my company we're now dabbling in these, we are drinking from the fire hose with the types of data and the volumes of data that is spewing off of these machines. That's where products like Asset Health and some of the other systems and, and tools that are available can really start to change the cost model of our industry. Okay, just uh, to quickly ground us in, in some terminology, my goal is to drive value across a more holistic view of the, the technology platforms in their totality. Okay, and by value, I mean quicker recognition of business benefit with whatever the business is trying to do. Getting the critical data, the critical information exposed from the lower levels of this model, get that up to the upper levels where the decision makers and the actions are taking place. Okay, it's ultimately about reducing cost as well. I mean, that's where the business wants to hear your story. And quite honestly, some of the things I'll talk about today do not require much, if anything, in the way of cost. And finally, there's some risk issues that I think a more unified and holistic approach 
to looking at your, your environment can come into play. And we can, we can improve that. So real quickly, I think many of you could probably relate. Traditional IT, where I have spent the majority of my career, lives largely at the top part of this model where we're processing transactions. It's a transaction-based world. We're, we're supplying our accounting systems, our, our, fine, our uh, inventory systems up on that upper level of that model. But as you get down to that level three, where you're starting to deal at the operation itself, in our case, large mining operations, and certainly below that, we're now dealing with that real-time, event-driven world that is creating volumes and volumes of data that is incredibly valued, valuable to us. Okay, our goal is to look at that model in its totality. Now we can't address everything, but we can start focusing and aligning ourselves so that we can make better decisions on how we're gonna manage this. Get that information up from the bottom, okay? And enable services, whether they be systems or third parties, that can help us optimize our business. I think Jeff touched upon some of the challenges with changing manpower. We, our industry has changed, we now have a lot of the gray beards are gone. We have a lot of young people that just don't have the history. There are service providers that can help us optimize our business. We can, we can supplement that loss, of, that loss of expertise. Okay, I guess one final thing I would add to this, to this discussion of this slide is that if you think about the way these technologies are managed, at that upper level, I'm managed through a CIO, a central point that controls and watches over all of the IT operations. But below that, the model quickly starts to degenerate, if you will, into a bunch of autonomously managed technologies. And operations technology, as we've got it defined in mining, includes everything from your plant process control systems to dozens of other systems, whether it's our fleet dispatching systems that manage our large production trucks, whether it's a slope monitoring system that's watching to make sure we're not gonna have cave-ins in our mines. There's tons and tons, literally dozens and dozens of operations technology in play in our operation, okay? And there is no central management facility over much of that technology. So we end up with lots of little silos of data, lots of systems that aren't fully utilized, well-meaning people trying to do the best, what they think is best, but it's really not done with a big picture in mind. And why is that, quite honestly? The general manager, when you get into those lower levels of the operation, um, into the mines, general manager's got way too many issues to deal with to be concerned with some of this technical stuff. He's concerned with manpower issues, managing budgets and production levels. So I've been asked to take a look at the larger um, issues of operations technology at the site. And I've been asked to put together this OT, ITOT competency center. So they really gave me a blank slate and said, John, go out and build an ITOT competency center. And I said, great, what is it? And they said, well, whatever you, whatever you think it should be. So I hope some of this stuff, uh, for those of you that may be further down this path, I hope some of this stuff is stuff that you can relate to. For some of you that are considering this, I hope some of it gives you some ideas of where maybe to look. We are literally a few feet down the journey, a few steps down the journey of a long 100-mile trip. We are just scratching the surface. So the four areas we're really focusing on, the first area is this concept of ITOT integration. As I just mentioned, IT has a more centralized command and control structure. Down into our operations, it really changes, it really varies uh, tremendously. There is no single person that you can turn to. So I will say this and I will probably say it again, this is not about IT taking over the world, okay? For those of you that are close to your operations, you probably have an understanding that there are huge cultural differences between traditional IT and the people that actually keep your operations run, running. You have to accept those things, okay? Remember, IT is focused, the, the, the drivers of IT are confidentiality of your data, the integrity of your data, and the availability of your data. If you look at the OT level down in your operations, that model is flipped upside down. It's really about availability. If it's not available, things aren't happening that are making money for the company. The integrity, you know, things happen in the operations. The data is as good as it can be, but it's never perfect. We're not dealing with financial transactions, we're just trying to get some operating data. And then the confidentiality, I'll speak for mining, we're not splitting the atom in the back room. There's nothing super secret about what we're doing. So, um, 
in this regard, it's really important to get over those cultural issues. I've had lots of meetings with, with um, the various people that support operations technology at the sites. I've met with their management teams. I'm not trying to own their world, but I'm trying to steer and direct them as best I can. And I guess before I go further, I'd like to make a comment about my team itself. I have a very small group of people. I have six people that report to me. Every one of us has a lot of operations experience, okay? Three of my, four of my people have actually implemented and supported process control systems. As of a month ago, I've been most fortunate to take three new people into my organization that are probably the two best maintenance people we have in the organization and one who is the best truck dispatching guru, I think, in North American mining. He is really a sharp guy. So I look for people in pulling them into my team that speak the language of the business. You don't want to put traditional IT people in front of the business at the level of the discussions we're having. It won't make sense. You just won't get the respect. And it's really about me helping the business understand what value IT can bring as we start moving into these areas. Again, not to own them, but to assist, to leverage our resources. Some of the areas that you can really focus on are your network, your security. Because uh, if you think about it, these technologies at this OT level, they are all very much based on commodity technologies. Whereas once they were proprietary, they're all using the same stuff now that we use in IT. we've used in IT for a long time. They're IP, they're IP networked, Ethernet networked. They've got Microsoft SQL databases. Uh, and you can't really expect that group of people that are putting their hands on and making decisions about these to understand what's best from a big picture perspective. So utilize your IT engineering uh, resources, inject them into these, into these projects, help the, help the operations see that IT can add value in these areas. Uh, the next level of focus that we have is this operational data and systems perspective, and this is where I'm really excited. You can't get there without doing the first part, or at least your journey will be slower, but I think this area of operations data and systems is where companies like Ventix can help us break down these silos of data. Right? We've got lots of systems that are spewing data out. We need to pull this in. We need rich analytics and help us eliminate all the volumes of spreadsheets and user-developed stuff that is really not sustainable and really not the way you want to be running the business. So I'm very excited about the potential to have uh, an asset uh, health type of system help us quickly turn that information into actionable into action, okay? We've got tons and tons of smart people in the company. We've got engineers that are doing the best they can, but unfortunately, I think we've spent too much time turning engineers into software developers, and that's really not where the value of those people lies, okay? And I've been preaching to the company, as I'm out in the field, we have to stop, we have to stop trying to reinvent the wheel, okay? We can be buying packages and systems and take advantage of the thousands of man hours of development the, that have gone into those and we will be much further ahead than we ever would be if we'd let our engineers and others try to develop software. That's not really where they're supposed to be. So I'm very excited about, to work with Ventix and, I, and I, I hope we get some really good results out of this. I'm sure we will. Uh, the, last area, the, the last two areas, automation and innovation, you know, it's interesting. Um, I think from an IT perspective, we have a lot of opportunity and we are, have a unique opportunity actually to have a, a, a view over the entire company that many groups don't. I see stuff in the company just because of the nature of the work that when you're at a given site, it, uh, you're kind of pigeonholed and you don't necessarily see what's happening on the, on the other side of the company. My, group, my group's role here is just to bring people together, to communicate to partner with the business so that if we see on one side of the company somebody's looking at some kind of a truck management system to collect data and we know it's already happening in, at another side, of the, another side of the company, let's not even reinvent the wheel within our own company, but let's bring those people together to have the discussion, okay? So we're really partnering with the business there. And then the fourth and final area of my group's focus is on this concept of integrated operations, which could be everything from remote operation, uh, remote operating center, um, to what I think will really happen at Cliffs is we will do more with a, a, a business intelligence center as we start to process and manage data. Uh, th 
there, my guidance there is just be careful as you look at these, these concept of integrated operations or remote operations center, whatever kind of terminology you want to put to these things. You have to make sure you're not just following or, or, or latching on to what you may be reading in a trade magazine. What works for one company obviously may not work for yours. Okay, so find the right model if you're going to look at these things and put the right people on it and, and make sure you're driving business value out of what you're trying to move forward with. Okay? So, that being said, we are truly just on the first steps of a very, very long journey. I hope there's some things that uh, I've said today that resonate with you, and, and uh, for those of you that are further ahead, I would love to talk to you, because um, I'm looking for, looking for guidance. Okay? Jeff? <laughs>